Despite his reputation as a rather quiet bit of the country, you will have seen through these videos that Norfolk and Suffolk have seen its fair share of terrible times in the past, with many a rogue, thief and killer plying their terrible business in the area. Today we will cover the story of another, who in a single night went from petty thief and poacher to a murderer, leading to the dubious distinction of his being the last public hanging in Suffolk. John Ducker was born in Halesworth in Suffolk, at some point in 1800. The exact date is not known, but starting fairly early in life, he was often in trouble with the law for petty crimes, something he would not grow out of as he grew older. And by the time he had been booked into Ipswich Jail in 1822 for theft, he was recorded as married with three children, and clearly crime was his way of earning a living to support his family. More crime would follow in the coming decades, some caught, but most probably not. His most notable one was theft of beans from a barn in Blyford in 1844. Practically nothing is known about this man. His looks, attitude and why he committed crime so frequently are all unknown. Although most likely it was down to necessity. The area of Halesworth he lived in was known for being a rough, impoverished area at the time. So it may have been with thoughts of feeding his family in his head when John Ducker, now aged 62, left his home on a dark night on the 24th of November, 1862, looking for his next illicit payday. Unknown to him, local police had got word of his plans and were beginning to watch him. He was the suspect in a string of burglaries in the local area that had taken place over the last few months. Around the time Ducker left looking for plunder, another Suffolk-born man was also heading out, but for a very different reason. Ebenezer Ty, originally from Hakeston near Woodbridge, was one of four children born to William Ty and Priscilla Ty. He was a 24-year-old police constable who had been a member of the Suffolk Constabulary for no more than a couple of years. He had originally plied his trade as a blacksmith living in Alderton, but while there he had been inspired to join the police force when living next to the local police station. Despite his relative inexperience in the role, Ebenezer was a confident officer, later described by one of his sergeants as an active and zealous officer, and in the June of that year, had been praised for his bravery when dealing with a particularly dangerous suspect. He had been given the night shift, patrolling and watching over Clark's Yard in Chedston Street, in the rougher area of Halesworth, not very far from where Ducker lived, and the area they believed he would be operating in. He was taken to the area by Sergeant Daniel Taylor, who instructed him on what he was looking for, and left him to carry on with his patrol elsewhere. The next morning, Sergeant Taylor was shocked that Constable Ty hadn't reported in. In fact, nothing had been seen of him since the two parted company. The alarm was raised and soon fellow officers were sent to look for him. The search did not take very long. He was found just off Clark's yard, face down, submerged in the water of a nearby river, with a blow to the back of the head, which is believed to have come from a cudgel, but investigators were unclear if it had been the head wound that had killed him if it had just been done to stun him and he was then drowned. Shocked and outraged, the police began to round up suspects, and given his extensive history, it was not long until suspicion fell on John Ducker, as an old hat, pretty much identical to one he was known to wear, was found in the reeds nearby. Sergeant Taylor, accompanied by Constables Lucas and Catamol, went to call on him and found him with severe injuries, including two black eyes, which he tried to explain away by telling the officers He'd been hit in the face by a log that sprung up when he was chopping wood. They were more inclined to believe they were caused by Constable Ty fighting for his life. Ducker was promptly arrested. His house was searched, and wet clothes covered in mud, similar to that found in the area of the crime, were also recovered. While he was being held in Station House on Key Street, Superintendent Gobbett was summoned from Beckles. While being held, he was visited by a local surgeon, a solicitor, and the chief constable from Ipswich but completely denied any involvement in the death. But the evidence that had been found was more than enough to satisfy the police, and he was soon transferred to Beckles Police Station to await his trial. Ebenezer Ty was buried a short time later in the winter of 1862 in Halesworth Cemetery. His funeral was attended by many from the police force, as well as 5,000 locals who came to pay their respects. The event was reported in the Suffolk Mercury. The funeral of P.C. Ebenezer Ty. The mortal remains of this unfortunate man were conveyed to their last resting place, the new cemetery on Saturday last. 
and were followed to the ground by a large group of the county's police, including eight superintendents, three inspectors, two sergeants and 42 constables, together with the poor man's father and other relatives. The deceased, as well as his sergeant, have always been much respected by the inhabitants of the town. Ducker stood trial in March 1863, with the prosecution putting forward the idea that what had happened is P.C. Tye had confronted him during the undertaking of his crime. After a scuffle, John Ducker ran, pursued by the officer until he was caught on Chedston Street, next to the river where the fight broke out, a fight that Ducker came out on top. Despite attempts from the defence that were at times were often half-hearted, there seemed to be little in the way of evidence that was ever going to save John Ducker. He was found guilty by the jury rather quickly and sentenced to be hanged for his crime. And due to this, it has often been suggested that the trial took place under somewhat of a cloud, with many believing the local authorities lent heavily on both the jury and on Ducker himself until they got the outcome they were looking for. Three of the jurors even went as far as after the sentencing to write to the Secretary of State saying they did not believe Ducker deserved to die for what he had done. It was not uncommon for the death penalty, even in crimes such as murder, to be overturned or commuted to long prison sentences or transportation. But it seems in this case, the killing of a police officer by a man who had long bothered the local police and authorities, there was going to be no other outcome. After his conviction, he awaited his hanging. The Monday before, he made a strange confession saying that he had pushed Constable Ty into the river during a fight, but had not hit him on the back of the head, and certainly had not drowned him, adding, Not my intention to make away with the man. I wanted to get away from him. And given, no matter what he would have said he was going to hang, why would he have lied? The hanging itself seems to have been recorded in very little detail from what I could find. What is known is 4,000 people came to see him die, and he was hanged from a scaffold, that had been constructed in the gateway of Ipswich Jail on St. Helen Street on the 14th of April, 1863. After his death, he was taken down and buried in the east side of the jail. He would mark the final person to hang publicly in the county of Suffolk. Five years later, public executions were made illegal by the government. No one else would have to face the sight of a baying crowd in their final moments. In 2012, to mark the 150th anniversary since the murder, local police gathered at Constable Ty's grave to recreate a photo taken shortly after his burial by his former colleagues. The crime was the inspiration for the short play Reasonable Doubt by Greg Hansen. The event is also remembered in the Halesworth and District Museum that can be found at Halesworth Railway Station. We will probably never know what really happened that night along the river. Was John Ducker telling the truth when he said all he did was push Constable Ty into the river, where possibly he hit his head on something and subsequently drowned? Or, as the police and court believed, that he had beaten him to death and dumped his body into the river, hoping he would escape scot-free? Either way, yet another ultimately tragic story that would mean the deaths of two people. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I'm sorry it's a little bit shorter than normal, one, there was not a huge amount of information I could find on this case. And two, I have currently been on holiday over this week. So this was written and recorded a couple of weeks ago around other ones. So I had to try and fit it in where I could and it needed to be a short one. I hope that hasn't detracted too much. All information and pictures used can be found in the description below. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you wish. This was John Ducker, the last person to be publicly hanged in Suffolk. And this was a little bit of history.